Hey guys, welcome back. So getting into the conclusion of Hulk Marines, where the madness continues. And it's like, you know, when I finished reading this, I actually pulled a bit more from it than what I expected. And really all I expected was a bunch of slashing and smashing. But at the end of the day, this three part series really serves its purpose of telling us the difference between Clay, Logan, and Bruce Banner. So now if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so like I said, for the most part, the narrative of this story is explaining the difference between your Weapon H, your Wolverine, and your Hulk. And as far as your Wolverine and Hulk, they've been through a number of changes throughout the years, with Wolverine at this point having heated claws, and your Immortal Hulk who only comes out at night, but for the most part, when you get to their character, they are who they are. Wolverine's your do whatever is necessary to get it done type of guy, and the Hulk is your get mad and smash type of guy. And of course, individually they have their complexities beyond that, but at their core, they have been that way for years and what I've noticed is that Hulk Vereens is doing for Weapon H like much of the same methods that they implemented for Wolverine and of course Hulk as well but a bit more Wolverines in there because with Wolverine initially being introduced fighting the Hulk and fighting a Wendigo like literally popping up out of nowhere and just jumping into this fight because in the beginning there wasn't much of an explanation behind that but after your Incredible Hulk like issue 180 and 181 we also got things like your solo Wolverine series and after that you got your Wolverine Origins you got your Wolverine Savage Origins to where many of these individual series series served the purpose of further flushing out the events that happened in between the events that we had seen prior, whether it was in Incredible Hulk Volume 1, whether it was in Uncanny X-Men, whether it was in Alpha Flight. Like the main objective of all these series served the purpose of telling more about his past in order to let us know more about his character. And in Hulk Marines, which is pretty much doing the same thing, but without getting into Weapon H's past that much, this series as a whole is just really one of those ingredients that's part of a larger recipe that has been very much modeled after Wolverine. To where you begin with X soldier first appears in the Hulk but Clay has to fight a lot more Hulks because back then there was only really one Hulk at least on Earth anyway but establishing Weapon H in the Marvel landscape right now with all these Wolverines and all these Hulks they're able to show us things with Clay in the course of a couple years that took them with Logan like decades but with everything that's taken place so far like with the leader manipulating both the Hulk and Wolverine to the point of where they would eventually cross paths with Clay, which was a plan of the leaders which eventually led him to meeting Dr. Alba to where they initially faced off, which eventually led to a stalemate. This really more so served the purpose of establishing Dr. Alba, who was a much newer character to being on par with the leader. And of course, with different advantages that counterbalance his intelligence. But with the leader's plans more or less failing with these three, and he really came to kill, steal and destroy, which ended up backfiring into a team up. This then forces Clay to move his family from their underwater safe house because the leader has made it clear that he knows where Clay's family is at this point and if the three of them were to go after the leader then Clay's family just wouldn't be safe in this location which is 100% correct because as soon as they touch the surface from this hideout they're attacked by one of Dr. Alba's humanoids which is very much a leader like tactic but we've seen already that Dr. Alba has taken a lot of inspiration from the leader as well as many other brilliant minds in Marvel history but in doing so her humanoids are much bigger much stronger because she built on top of what already existed instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. But with this attack seeming to be on Clay's family, but instead as it turns out, this humanoid just boot gang Wolverine and Banner and just takes off with him and that's it. And so like we had talked about not long ago, Dr. Alba and the leader have pretty much hijacked the shadow base location and commandeered their laboratory in order to make their next attempt at capturing and controlling Weapon H. And with them working together, which is a pretty dangerous combination because both are smart, but the leader is a freaking genius. Genius. But the place where Dr. Alba excels, which we had seen in Totally Awesome Hulk and all throughout Weapons of Mutant Destruction, where Dr. Alba excels or what would be her superpower if you will, it would be more so the ability to make a number of factors work together, which in my opinion is much more dangerous as far as scientific minds go. But with their plan being pretty much to make Wolverine and Hulk also Hulk Vereens and not permanently. I'll explain that in a little bit. But with them planning to do this in order to draw Clay out so that Dr. Alba can make another attempt at controlling Clay, they're really just using Logan and Bruce as a means to an end. And while they're undergoing this process, which is like a temporary implementation through the use of nanobots that would pretty much give Logan and Bruce what the other has, with nanobots increasing Logan's strength. And for Banner, these nanobots would just put adamantium over his bones. And this method, though effective for right now, is 
not as sustainable as the process that they had originally gone through like with Wolverine with Weapon X or even with Banner being caught in the Gamma Test Bomb in Nevada and though this brand new procedure which is also way quicker but though it's able to give them the similar results as what Clay has physically like for Logan it's not as permanent as Banner's gamma radiation which part of he was born with and which later upon his incident even more gamma radiation was infused in his DNA and as far as Logan who's pretty much had his bones deep fried in adamantium <laughs> the same applies as well but as far as Clay who also has a version of the nanobot technology with the adamantium goes around his bones so he can grow and shrink and still have the adamantium bones what Dr. Alba did for him was a much different process which took a lot more time and during the time that she created Weapon H because she understood even then that Clay still had more discipline than either Banner or Logan rather than controlling him from day one she left many of the higher functions in his brain not just because he had the discipline to manage it but also so he could execute his strategic expertise in the field but what we find out is the thing that separates Clay from Banner and Logan is that with Banner when you add those animal instincts and the claws Banner goes nearly mindless like your Savage Hulk and possibly even beyond that and God forbid he has like a berserker rage like Wolverine and then that would be like the worst Hulk ever but you have a similar situation when you get to Logan who I would definitely say has more discipline than the Hulk but because he has been who he is all his life for many years he has relied on his animal instincts so at this point when you augment those instincts which he has nearly lived his entire life relying on then those instincts become a liability because when they change they then open the door to change his judgment but so from here they're transferred from shadow base FN 34 to shadow base BX 97 and really this is done just for the purpose for them to tear things up and draw clay out and for Dr. Albin the leader this is like their first date like they are having a great time like they just watching and caking and all that but with Hulk and Wolverine here at this shadow base which was heavily guarded they literally level this place in less than an hour and then not long after that they just start fighting each other since there's nothing else to do but from their rival and over the course of what's said to be like 68 minutes between them tearing this place apart and then fighting each other Clay finally drops in after being dropped off by Captain America and Black Widow who are keeping their distance because they ain't stupid <laughs> because this is the kill box now like this is where you go to die <laughs> and the two of them know better than to come out here throwing frisbees and going pew pew with little guns man you just don't do that because from the time that Clay got there it's just a all out brawl and as far as Hulk and Wolverine who haven't really been given instructions they just been set out here and just let wild and as a result they're just gonna destroy anything that's in their path and if you're wondering how much exactly just trust me it was a lot especially since we talking about the Wolverine here with the heated claws hulked out Wolverine with the heated claws like come on man but the thing is with Clay going up against these two and taking a lot of damage in the process but with applying strategy he then just takes the fight over to the leader and Dr. Alba who both thought it would be cool just to kick it courtside but if you gonna watch the game courtside you gotta know in your mind that there's a possibility one of the players just might jump for the ball and land in your lap and usually the players who do that they're not like your clean cut players they're more like your, your Dennis Rodman or somebody so they were aware pretty quickly that this wasn't a good look but of course they had a contingency for that which I mentioned before those nanobots they just hit the switch call them back and both Banner and Logan go back to their regular selves to which both are still dangerous but not immediately because they both need time to recover but with this being done this is when Dr. Alba implements her endgame and makes her attempt to use these new nanobots to control Clay and like I mentioned before when she first made him she had left his mind alone so he can make decisions in the field so he can be strategic and unlike Wolverine when he was in Weapon X to where at the time after there was a training period but for Clay there would be no need and so in order to make this even more thorough this time she mentions that she's even going to go as far to erase his family from his memories to eliminate what she would call baggage for him to quote think clearer and be easier to direct and contain and man I tell you that is a heads up display if I ever seen one. But what Dr. Alba failed to realize, and this is something we'd seen even with Weapon H fighting against uh, X-23 and also against Dario Agar in Weird World where we had seen him even resist Morgan Le Fay, through the course of time Clay has built a much higher tolerance for this whole mind control thing and even to be more specific from the time that he's become Weapon H he's been dealing with a version of nanobots which he's had to control and navigate just to be Weapon H this whole time. And when Dr. Alba and the leader find this out they don't really have a plan C so they just get up out of there. Which come to think of it 
Luther probably was their plan C. But when it's all said and done, they return back to Widow and Cap, back as the regular selves, or as regular as regular was before Dr. Alba's recent shenanigans. And as the dust settles and they come through, Widow actually calls off Alpha Flight, to whom prior to this being resolved, was about to send a containment team because the Hulk Marines were considered a near cosmic level threat. But what's funny because when Banner and Logan come out, they don't try to explain themselves or nothing. And I mean, they acknowledge Cap, but that's about it. But with things being resolved at this point and everybody pretty much just getting ready to go their own way, Clay, who now has to figure out a different alternative plan for where his family's gonna live and where they're gonna hide when stuff goes crazy. But like we talked about before, he has plenty of money, so that's not really a worry. But from here, as for Logan and Banner, who will likely just go for drinks after this because they fought each other so much at this point that it's almost like second nature. But before they leave, like just for a second, you kind of get a glimpse from the both of them when they see Clay with his wife hugging his kids. It's like for a second, they get a glimpse of something that they never actually truly had. And I mean, they're both fathers, but you and I know, and I'm sure they know as well, that they haven't really done the best in that department. And this moment was briefly a reminder of that. But the funny thing is, trailing Bruce and Logan as they go to get a drink, Dr. Alba and the leader, who are still kind of watching and trailing them, and just really going back and forth on how Wolverine and the Hulk and Weapon H are just quote unquote wasted potential, they actually realize through all of this that they really see a lot from the same standpoint. And at that moment, they knew that they were meant to be together. And I gotta say, I knew it. I knew it from day one. Like ever since they fought each other and nobody won, I was like, oh yeah, they definitely gonna hook up at some point in time. And I still don't want to picture that in my mind. Don't want that mental image. <laughs> but that'll do it for this one, guys. So now, from here, it's likely that the next time we'll get into more Weapon H, that that'll just fall into place on our War of Realms playlist, to where we're like 10 videos in so far, and that video will likely be video 13 or 14 maybe, because there's quite a few other things to hash out before we get to that point. But make sure you're caught up with both the War of Realms and the Weapon H playlist, so when it pops off, you ain't completely lost. But like I said, that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again in the next one. All right, later.